Hello my friends and welcome to another video and today we're going to be going over the basics of Octane which sounds kind of boring but actually really interesting we're going to be going over some render settings um, speeding up your renders with optimization also just setting up some general lighting and getting some cool cinematic shots so I'm going to try to keep this pretty short because um, I know everyone's probably busy learning right now uh, all these cool tutorials online um, but I will keep it very informative so Let's get into it. So I'm gonna assume you have a basic knowledge of Octane and if you don't, you can still follow along. First launching Octane, Octane Live Viewer Window. This Live Viewer Window is gonna pop up right here. And before we go into all these crazy buttons and everything, you're just gonna to wanna to grab this right here and kind of slide it around and you'll see these white kind of things appear and you can kind of just dock it somewhere. I like to dock mine in the bottom right corners. Usually I level with me and I'm usually looking at Octane inside the whole time. All right, so let's just create a plane right here. Shade or create shader C40 Octane, Octane material. Perfect. Uh, we're just gonna drop this onto our plane and we have a basic plane and that's it. We don't have any lighting or anything. So we're gonna go over here to Octane. Uh, we can create a, we'll create a light first, HDR environment. Uh, you can also create that, but we'll just do Octane Daylight. And perfect, so if we punch R on Cinema 40, you can kind of rotate the light and scale it, but it's really not giving us much information because there's not much to do here. Uh, we're just looking at a flat plane. So we're gonna go over this material and we're gonna automatically our material editor will pop up. You can dock it or I just like to leave it open and click note editor. So Octane's note editor is awesome and it's gonna look really intimidating at first, but trust me, uh, you'll get to learn uh, learn how to use it pretty fast. So automatically it gives us a diffuse material. I like to go to glossy, most things are glossy material. And our note editor kind of just pops around a lot, just trying to keep it under control. And we're gonna just be creating a simple texture first. So just drag in three image textures. So we're gonna be creating a landscape and we created this landscape in the last tutorial. Um, so if you've done, if you've already done that tutorial, you can just follow along with this one. So always when you're creating something that has a texture, it's usually gonna come with a height map and you're gonna want this node right here. But first we're just gonna take our nodes and import them. So you can either search through it through the file system or I like to just pull this up and drop them down into it. So once you've loaded all your textures in, they're gonna all be right here. I like to put my diffuse at the very top because this our diffuse is kind of just a fancy word for texture. It's what is diffusing the color. Um, so we just drag our diffuse texture at the top and then our image texture this next one is a bump. If it's colorful like this, it's gonna, actually it's a normal, sorry. If it's colorful like that, it's usually just a normal texture. Uh, you can see right here, normal map, height map, and color map. And if you get a height map, which it, it's kind of, height maps are awesome because they're free geometry for your rendering. Uh, you can get a lot of detail with less computing power. You always have to plug them into this displacement node. We'll talk a little bit about this displacement node because it's pretty, uh, it's pretty important to get these settings right for maximum quality. So level detail, um, if you have an 8K texture, you're gonna go 8K and we'll just drop down and see what the rendering or what all of that texturing did. So this is why Octane is so amazing. I'm able to move around in this scene actively and uh, get these really fast refreshes and real time results. And you can notice there's some problems here, but we'll talk about that after we uh, clean up this texture a little bit. And those are actually called hot pixels, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So we're gonna actually go to roughness and just roughen up this texture some. You see a really rough texture becomes really reflective. Um, so usually ground is really rough and you would want a roughness like this. And it kind of got rid of our hot pixels, which were a problem. We're gonna keep this in mind. Let's do go ahead and dock this texture right here. Because uh, we're going to be creating a little bit of an atmosphere. So I'm just going to try to be going over all the basics that you need to know. And you're going to go Octane. So go over here to Objects. And then Octane Fog Volume. And perfect. So we have our Fog Volume generating right here. And we'll just go over here to Generate. 
and this is your voxel size, you're gonna keep this pretty high. And the more voxels you have, the more your computer will crash. And trust me, uh, if you wanna just try it real quick, take this and drag it all the way down, your computer will crash immediately. Unless you're watching this in the future, when the computers are way more awesome than they are today. Okay, so you can see our fog volume right here. We just change the voxel size a little bit smaller. Uh, now we're gonna go over to our medium and click on this down button. There's this density slider, um, which is great. And this volume step length, which will kind of just make it render faster as well, but make it lower quality. I like to turn it up some. Uh, but something weird that Octane does is it, for some reason, makes this fog absorb and scatter this gray color which I guess is good in some situations, but for this one, we want a kind of white atmospheric look. So we're just gonna change those absorptions and scatterings to white, and that's, we can maybe bump it down a little bit. No, we'll just go all the way up. It's really what we want uh, to get kind of photorealistic look. Still a little too dense. Um, so. This is looking pretty good, but it's just too thick and it's obvious. It's obvious it's just a square. So we'll go over to generate and edge feather and slide that all the way up. And you're gonna use this a lot, especially when creating atmospheres, because then you can take your fog and you can see right here, there's a little bit of a mistake. So if you edge feather all the way, you can see your voxels disappear if their sizes are too small. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. We can go back here, change the voxel size, and that gives us a little bit more high resolution of a feather. And you can automatically see once we toggle it on and off, it's just adding a little bit of that atmosphere into our scene and making this, the lighting a little bit more realistic. Speaking of the lighting, we can go over to it right now and start messing with it. So by punching R, you're able to rotate the daylight. See. Honestly, this direct lighting never looks realistic to me. Um, so I like to usually do sunrise or sunset. It's a pretty cool look right there. Okay. Something like that looks pretty interesting. So we have our daylight system. And now that I mentioned it, we might as well go over everything. Your sky turbability turb is basically just like saying your, the denseness of your sky. Um, and you can see when we get a really dense sky, we get this great color. And if we pull the light over, it just falls really flat. So if you're doing a nice sunset, it's great to just turn that up. Maybe that's a little too much. You see we're getting a lot of hot pixels now too because of it. Uh, and then the power, how powerful your sun is. This is a really cool look. Um, it's interesting, you can kind of color grade with this node or with this system as well and then sun size so we're actually doing a landscape so we want a large sun size because the shadows are going to not be so sharp they're going to be more diffused because the sun size is bigger so here's the difference in shadows and you can see the second shadow is just way more realistic if you look down here if we zoom in we kind of can see right here the shadows how they get from really sharp to really big. And that just helps selling your scale and helping everything in your scene look more photorealistic. And then you can also add a volume into your fog medium, but we're not gonna really go over that. We already added our volume medium in. So now let's create that Octane camera. So the first thing you're gonna do, and when I first figured this out, I had probably been using Octane for a couple weeks and I was really upset because I realized how great this tip was and I had heard it so late. So what you wanna do is go ahead and just click this button right here and then jump into one of these that you're not gonna use. So I like to use this bottom right one. Go to display, constant shading, and cameras. And let's just do perspective and boom right there. And another thing is if you wanna hide this fog volume, just double click this right there and it goes away from a Cinema 4D, but it's still an Octane. Okay, great. So we've gone up setting a basic material, um, using the daylight system, adding in a volume. Now let's create, let's just mess with our, 
Now let's just change these camera settings. And you can see right here, if you just click on your camera, you can enable motion blur, which if you're gonna do 24 frames a second, which is the cinematic frame rate and the best frame rate for getting good render speeds, you're gonna do shutter of 0 0.24, 0 0.25 or 0.5, not 0 0.265, 0 0.25. It's a good motion blur. Uh, we're just doing a still though, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you don't really need to mess with this right now. You can do depth of field and stuff, but that's kind of for another video that's a little complicated. Um, but camera imager, and this is really important for render times. You're gonna enable your camera imager, and you can see we have different responses right here. And if I just tap through them, I'll make octane larger because we're really just messing with the camera now. Uh, real time rendering is awesome. So I can just You just snap through your responses and see the different looks that they give you. Uh, for linear workflows, you're going to do linear, of course, but we're just going to stay in sRGB for the video because that's what our screen is outputting right now. You can also do neutral response. You can change your gamma, put it back at one, and then you can also add a custom LUT. And they have some great LUTs built in. Like, let's say I really like this LUT right here, but it's a little extreme for me. I can just change the strength and lower it down. So we'll do something like that. That looks pretty nice right there. You can also vignette. We'll just add a slight vignette as well. And then here is our hot pixel remover. And you see if we slide it up all the way, we lose all our detail. So I like to just pull it down right here because you will get some of those occasional hot pixels. Um, Making our terrain this rough though really did uh, help with that. And we can go back to our node editor and see now what I'm talking about if we go into specular. Well, we don't even have to do that. We can just go right here and then go to basic specular roughness right there. We can just drag this around and see how we're getting all of these hot pixels now. So that atmosphere if you think about it, in real life, you have atmosphere going through uh, this, the lights going through the atmosphere, which is diffusing the light onto the landscape. Um, so that's really that's really why you would want to crank that roughness up all the way, because the ground is that rough and there is an atmosphere. But if we didn't have this fog volume, it doesn't look as realistic. It's really helping out. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, you don't want to start materialing everything until you're lighting an atmosphere setup so you know what you're working with. So this looks pretty great right here. And we can just move back over and adjust our camera angle just by doing this, sliding around in our viewfinder. And uh, I, was, I was actually kind of liking this right here. So just a couple more things we'll do is uh, we'll go back to those camera settings and go to post-processing. You're gonna click enable, and I like to add a little bit of bloom, a lot, obviously too much, but just a little bit, especially in these big landscapes, really makes it look dramatic, kind of cool. You can also add glare. We don't really wanna add any glare right now though, uh, and that's pretty much it. So now that we have our scene ready, we're almost ready to render. Uh, we can go over one more material type. This is not really a material video, but I'll just create one for y'all. Let's just do, that's way too big. Uh, we'll just create a quick cylinder. And we'll change the radius to like 0.1. Hmm, point two. Looks pretty cool. We'll have it come off screen. This is an example of leading lines right here. And they can do some really cool sci-fi renders with stuff like this. Um, perfect, like a space elevator almost. Uh, so we have this right here. Uh, let's say we want it to glow though. So we're gonna go over and we'll make this bigger again. Create shader C4A, 
C40 Octane, Octane Material, drag it on. And uh, didn't change any, but that's okay because we're still gonna mess around in it. So we don't even need to go into our node editor for this. We can just go to Emission, Black Body Emission, and boom, we have a glowing tube or a light. Also, you can create lights by going to Objects, Light, Octane Area Light, and then rotate it around. I have a whole video on this. You can see the bloom is really cool right there, uh, but that's too much, obviously. So we have this cool cylinder. You can change the settings of it just by doing this, changing the power, something like that. Change the temperature, you can make a really red color, a really cool blue color. You can see we're introducing some noise. So now let's say we have our scene set up and everything's ready to go. Let's do, uh, let's go into settings now to render. Now there's so many different ways you can do this. I like to do GI diffuse, usually gives you the best results. Path tracing and PCM is the most accurate, but I never use it. Path tracing, sometimes I use, but you can see there's not really a big difference. In some situations, path tracing is faster because of the hot pixels and stuff that you're getting from specular material, but uh, not in this case. So we're gonna change our max samples to 1024. And this is a good starting out range, depending on your scene. You might need more, you might need less. But you can also you can access your camera imager, denoising, and your post setting right here. So I mentioned some AI denoising, and this is a good time to get into it. We'll end on AI denoising because it's so amazing. So in camera imager, we enabled it. We're gonna just click on AI denoiser and enable, enable. Uh, I like to do like a hundred on each min and max. It really doesn't. Honestly, I don't know if it does anything. Um, the AI denoising does, but I don't know if this does. Uh, also, you can toggle your info right here to bring it up and bring it down. And we're on our main right now, but if we go to denoise, you can see all of that noisy light down there is gone, which maybe for a still, this is not too bad, but for an animation, this light would be kind of different and bouncing all around and not look too good. Um, so, I'm probably sure YouTube compression is not showing this. Oh, okay, so this is a good look. This is a good look right here. And let's just go back and change our settings to something like samples, like max samples 300. So you see the difference right here, main and denoised. It just took away all of that. Uh, so definitely use this. But to use it, we're gonna have to go into render settings. And this is our final, final uh our final tips i guess the final tips so you're gonna go over to octane render right here and then render passes save beauty beauty passes uh denoise passes denoise beauty this is just making sure we're telling the render hey use this denoiser right here and then main use denoise beauty pass so now when we render it which we can output I assume I don't need to go over these settings. You can just click your save file, your output file. Uh, when we're ready, we have this set to Octane Render. We can output our render. And there it goes right there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want more tutorials like this, let me know. I just wanted to kind of do a basic overview of Octane, super simple. Maybe there's some good tips in there for you. Uh, maybe you already knew everything and I wasted your time. In that case, I'm sorry. Um, Check down below, I got some free project files probably. Uh, every time I post a project file, I'll leave it free for the first seven days for all you subscribers. Uh, and then after that, they're all $5. So if you're new and you wanna see some cool Octane scenes that you can get for free, go check below. And uh, thanks guys for watching, peace out.